The following video contains something that may be sensitive. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi everyone, Lewis here, and I'm back with my latest interview. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts and want to upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. In this video, I interview my, my longtime friend, fellow Twitch streamer, diver, YouTuber, and merfolk, Kiaihime94, also known as Mermaid Moral Opal. And you're in for a, a huge surprise on what she has to say during this piece. I am joined here by my friend, longtime friend, Kiaihime94, also known as Mermaid Moral Opal. Introduce yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Kidari. My mermaid name is Moyet Opal, which means uh, Opal of the Sea in Gaelic. I'm an Irish plus size mermaid from the North Atlantic Sea. Welcome. Thank you, Lou. You're welcome. And of course, I'm also known as Merman of Etra Philly, a East Coast merman from off the coast of New Jersey. So, Kiai, we're going to be talking about a lot of things. Mermaiding, diving, cosplay, you as a Twitch streamer and YouTuber. Yep. I'm looking really good forward to it. Thank you so much for having me here today. You're welcome. So, here's the first question. What made you want to get into diving? Oh, <laughs> Oh my, um, I love the water. I've been obsessed with the ocean for my entire life. I've always been a swimmer. I grew up as an athletic swimmer. So I'm just a water bug and I've always wanted to scuba dive but just was never presented with the opportunities to do so until later in my adult life. Um, and then a great friend, AKA you, introduced <laughs> me to a great dive shop in Philadelphia city that I was able to start on that journey. And I was able to get open water scuba certified with Patty in September of 2019. And I'm working on my advance now. And of course, I'm still trying to plan out my advanced diver soon as well. And not to mention, I fell in love with diving since I was two years old. And I've also am a water bug like you. Yes. And of course, Favorite places to dive? Oh, are you asking me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've only ever dove so far for my certification in a quarry in Pennsylvania at Dutch Springs, but I do have a bucket list of places I would love to dive in the future. That's cool. Um, and of course, the, speaking of Dutch Springs, which is now known as Lake Hydra, I too, Lake Hydra. Also, I too also did my own certification dives there. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, of of Dutch Springs, what did you think about that plane when you did that? I will be sure to post <sighs> your link in the description below and in the cards. Yeah, the, the, the plane and the school bus and the speedboat that I got to dive down for, uh, for one of my specialties under Advanced Patty, it was really, really awesome. It was suspended somewhere around around 30 or 40 feet down. And it was really, really cool to see. I wasn't, of course, allowed to go inside yet because I didn't have the tech training for that. But it was really, really cool to see. I like wreck diving. I think it's going to be one of my favorite things with diving in general is wreck diving and probably cave diving. Yes. And speaking of that plane, as I told you, I, when I went there two years ago in 2020, I got to go inside only because of the fact I was guided by an experienced diver. Mm -hmm. And next, maybe next time, if I go when I go back there, maybe I will sh be sure to show you what the interior is like. And of course, what before they sink any of these attractions anywhere, they always strip out the interior, like you've seen with the trolley, for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. They make it safe, specifically for the training and safety of divers. And of course, there's also dive heart. And of course, speaking of wreck diving which of course you already seen three years ago, I got to dive the C-53 Philippe, which is an old U.S. Navy vessel that was around during World, 
World War II and then later sold to the Mexicans who then decommissioned it and sunk it in 1999. Nice. And that I would love a, to see that in person. Yes, someday you will. Add it to the bucket list. I highly recommend you dive that. <laughs> and speaking of cave dives, there's one site I want to go to in Cozumel one day, and that is called The Devil's Throat at Punta Oh, Pool. yes. The Devil's Throat looks so beautiful. But of course, it's also dangerous too, which is why we needed a guide to get us through safely and also... You need the proper training. And then this is from what people who I met th through Dive Heart who dove that site told me they, that when coming up, you do a lot of decompression stops on the way yes. up. Yes, yes, absolutely. It that is, is absolutely to, necessary. It is close to the limit that a wreck diver can dive at. Wow. That's why. Yeah, and that's deeper than a general open water cert can go. So Exactly. Mm-hmm. And of course, free diving. And, and as you already know, I'm still working on my open water free diver. I'm currently confined water free diver from Naui as of this recording. Hopefully, I can get my mermaid and, you know, use that to swim in my tail in open water. You absolutely will. And congrats again, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, Second question, mermaiding. How did you get into mermaiding? And how did you choose the name Moral Opal? Okay. Uh, I think a lot of mermaids are going to answer this question the same. We've loved mermaids since we were very, very young. Um, I'm going to have to be cliche here and say that the first representation of mermaids that I saw as a child in media was The Little Mermaid from Disney. But then I also grew up with shows like H2O, Just Said Water, which was based in Australia, an amazing mermaid show. And then over time, that sequel, Mako Mermaids, Netflix exclusive. And other things, and I just ran with it. I loved mermaids ever since. I've looked into the mythology of mermaids. I've looked into the biology of mermaids. I've just always wanted to be a mermaid. I couldn't stop drawing them. I always like thought of them, made songs about them. <laughs> As embarrassing as that might sound. <laughs> no, no, no. It's no big deal. It isn't. No, it's not that yeah. to me. Thank you. And speaking and then, of The Little Mermaid, let's mm -hmm. just say, before you can pick up, I too mm -hmm. fell in love with The Little Mermaid because it wasn't just because of you. I also wanted a tale since I was five years old because I seen mermen in the movie. Yes. And I have you to thank for introducing me to H2O. And of course, I discovered Mako Mermaids on my own. Mm hmm. Of course. Go we ahead, share the just... love. Mermaids are a wonderful topic, and it, it, there's just no point in hoarding it all to yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah. Sharing is, is caring. Go ahead. Continue what you were saying. Yeah. So then later in my adult life, again, opportunities were non-existent for a while, and a lot of things that I'm going through only happened later in my adult life. But um, I started finding accounts on Instagram of other mermaids that actually have tails and you know they posted beautiful pictures and videos this was back in maybe 2017 like my very first year of freedom and it was mesmerizing to me i absolutely had to have one i absolutely wanted to be one of them and ever since then i've gotten my first tail i've gotten some other things commissioned by other wonderful artists across different websites through instagram as well and now I am my own mermaid. I have my own gear. I have everything that I would like. And I decided on the name Moyer Opal because Opal is my birthstone. I was born in October. I'm a Halloween baby. And uh, Moyer is a Gaelic word, which means sea. And I am of primarily Irish and Scandinavian descent. So I wanted to represent that. And the reason why I chose Adventure of Philly, which I have you and sort of mermaid ginger to thank is because one I, I have a taste for adventure and two because of the Philadelphia sports team especially the Phillies mm -hmm. I think are, your name is very creative especially because I also kind of have I was kind of also influenced by third of right fielder Bryce Harper when he's brought out that Philly fanatic headband oh yeah and you have the headband in your mersona too yeah and it still is part of my mersona mm-hmm 
once you find that thing that really speaks to you and you can incorporate that into the character that you create for yourself, it just feels more unique and it feels more magical. Of course, maybe someday I will have a tail with, with all the Philly sports team logos on it, including the Phillies, because I hope to have that if, if I ever get a silicone tail. That's really cool. And of course, speaking of some mermaids, as you already know, I've met you, one of your favorites, Serenity. I'm being interrupted er by my child. I'm so sorry. You That's can't okay. right now. I'm busy. Thank you. I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Speaking of mermaids, you, you love Mermaid Serenity. And of course, you'd already know I met her earlier this year at the Adventure Aquarium. Mm -hmm. She was very nice. She was very kind. Mermaid Serenity is a wonderful mermaid. Actually, she was one of the very first that I found on Instagram those years ago when I first started seeing them on social media, among others like Mermaid Jewels and Mermaid Ginger and Mermaid Serenity and all the others I mentioned. They definitely spoke out to me like they they stood out to me and they, they they they've been in a more professional sense of the mermaiding career for quite a long time. And they definitely were a huge inspiration for me in the journey that I took in mermaiding. And I have you to also thank for getting me into it as well, in addition to me, me loving The Little Mermaid since I was nine. I mean, five. I mean, five. Excuse me, I have to say five. Mm -hmm. And I apologize course, for background noise. I do have two children, and, and they don't and, know what privacy is. <laughs> yes, I get it. You're, you're a parent. No worries. And, of course, now we move on to the next subject, and that is being a... Twitch streamer. Yep, I am a Twitch streamer on twitch.tv. My name is Kidari Hime94. And of course, I enjoy it every time you stream and some of the lessons you carry, like the lesson that you told me and Darth Mortar the other day. I made that into a post on my wall. Nice. I was referring to you. I haven't seen it yet, but that's awesome that some of the things I say on that stream uh, resonate with you. Yeah, you're welcome. And of course, I also like how you in, you you put your mer mersona, your your diving, on there too. Sometimes I also do that as well. Right. It's really fun to sometimes stream as a mermaid, especially if I'm playing underwater themed games or pirate games like Sea of Thieves and Subnautica, among a few of my absolute favorites. And I have you to thank for getting me interested in some of these games. They're really great games. I highly recommend. Yes, thank you. And of course, besides those games, what else do you like to do on Twitch besides underwater games? Oh, I play a lot of retro games. Um, I grew up with Sony PlayStation in my household, and it's really, really, really close to my heart, and Nintendo games as well. So sometimes I'll stream games like Spyro the Dragon and Tomb Raider, two of my top favorite franchises, series, etc. Um, I'll also play modern games like Grand Theft Auto V or... Um, Star Trek Online, World of Warcraft, other MMORPGs. I've spent a lot of time on World of Warcraft. It's a little difficult to stream that. It's a bit intense on my computer, but I have streamed it sometimes. Yes, yeah, I've seen that before. And Whatever suits my fancy. Oh, yeah, I, I understand that. Of course, don't forget, if it wasn't for you, I, we wouldn't have met a lot of famous people, including our pal Mark, the Worldly Gamer. Oh, yes, Marky, the Worldly Gamer. It is spelled as it's spelled, the Worldly Gamer with an underscore at the very end. If you're looking for him on Twitch, he has been an amazing friend and pretty much partner throughout my Twitch journey since we found each other almost a year ago. He discovered my stream looking for Tomb Raider streamers and I was running through Tomb Raider. He introduced me to challenge running. And that's been a huge thing in my channel ever since that I've been practicing different challenges with the old original PlayStation and Tomb Raider games in the 90s. It's been a really, really fun journey. And he's been instrumental in helping my channel blow up pretty much in the past year. Okay, the next subject is cosplaying. Who, who, which character is your favorite to cosplay as? 
My favorite character in the whole wide world is the same person where I get the name Kidari from. Her name is Kidari Moroboshi. She is from Auto Master, specifically the branch called Cinderella Girls. Um, Auto Master is a huge franchise of um, Japanese idols. They have multiple media, they have anime and they have video games for multiple platforms and five different branches. Cinderella Girls is my favorite branch and Kidari is my favorite idol. All, all right, so you like Cinderella, uh, Cinderella Girls from mm-hmm. the Idol Master franchise. Who else do you like to cosplay as besides those, besides her? Besides Kidari? Okay, so I have cosplays of other characters. One of my absolute favorite characters when I first started cosplaying like, like more seriously and creating my own cosplays was a character. Her name is Honoka Kousaka from Love Live. I'm sorry, my crown is literally trying to fall off my head right Don't now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Her name is Honoka. She's another redheaded girl, and she's in um, an anime and video game series similar to Auto Master called Love Life School Auto Festival. It, um, it's really, really fun, and it's a cute school, more school, high school-based anime and franchise. And um, they basically are idols, and they perform for their school as opposed to on a more professional scale on stage. And she's my favorite character. Um, I also cosplay as Mikuru from Suzumiya Haruhi no Yutsu, which in America is called The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. And I grew up with that. I watched that maybe 2005, 2006. It was one of my favorite anime back then. And again, she's another redheaded character. I seem to gravitate more towards redheaded characters because we don't really get a lot of representation in media with red hair. And there are a few characters growing up in American cartoons as well that I really, really love and hyper fixate on simply because they have red hair, like Kim Possible, um, the main girl of the three girls from Totally Spies. I think her name is Sam, et cetera, et cetera. So it's the same thing with Japanese culture and the anime. And then the girls that I end up cosplaying just so happen to be redheaded girls. That's cool. And the, and here's the other subject, you being a YouTuber, what, 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 I've seen you do a lot of dance videos and, of course, your diving video and some of your mermaid content. Can you tell me at least what is one of your favorite pieces of content you like to put out on your channel? (laughs) I would say my favorite content to upload would probably be the most common and the majority of the content on my YouTube channel is my dancing. I basically um, I've been dancing since I was pretty young. I wouldn't say I was a professional dancer or any kind of um, competitive dancer. I never took dance classes. I've never really been exposed to dance with my family like my my friends have been. But um, around 11, 12, 13 years old, I started trying to copy the dances I saw in Japanese culture and J-pop music. And I would copy the choreography in my room until I memorized it all. And I would just dance at school for my friends. And I've really pretty much just been dancing J-pop and then eventually K-pop when I got into high school for years. So now that I have my freedom back again and I'm able to um, upload what I want on YouTube, I choose to dance. I really, really love J-pop and there's a little bit of K-pop on there as well, maybe one or two songs. But it's primarily Japanese and I try to either match an outfit similar to the vibe or the feeling of the song or I specifically wear my cosplays in the dance video. And I'm little by little learning how to edit videos as well because I'm starting completely from scratch with that too. Yeah, it's totally understandable. I hope someday I can do another video collaboration with you, like diving, mermaiding. It would be fun to do a collab. Yeah, that would be fun. And of course, there's other things. What's your thoughts on Dive Heart so far? Dive Heart, I think, is a really awesome organization. Um, I don't know too much about them just yet, but from all the representatives of the company that I have spoken with over the uh, past two years and then through you as the liaison who introduced me to said folks, they've been really accommodating and sweet and amazing. And they introduced me to groups on Facebook and other social media in the area in which I currently live so that I can get connected with the right people from my area since we no longer live in the same city like we used to. And Dive Heart is really, really awesome of a company. They help out with pretty much um, 
people that can't dive under normal circumstances. So those with disabilities, it's, I think it's called assistive diving or yeah. assisted diving. Adaptive diving. Adaptive diving. That's the word. Thank you. And yeah, I think it's really, really cool that they're able to do that and help lots of people experience such a wonderful hobby out there. It's it, being in water is just so calming and it's really good, especially for some people that might have some injuries or they need um, maybe some aquatic physical therapy. Scuba diving is really, really, really good. And like, it's calm on the body. It's not intensive. It doesn't, you know, aggravate anything. It's really awesome that they help make the experience enjoyable for everyone. I'm, I'm glad that's what you think of it because 21 years ago, it was started by Jim himself who has a daughter who's blind. He was originally a adaptive ski instructor. He thought, why not apply this to scuba diving? And that's how the organization was born. And of course, how did I get involved in, in it? It was because of my mentor, Wendy, who of course is friends with Jim. And I also discovered one of my pals who I've met on my trips to Cozumel in, in an article from WGN in Chicago, Nick Johnson talks about autism and scuba diving. Just also how I found Dive Heart. And I'm excited about my upcoming trip to Cozumel with them. And hopefully one day you can join us in Cozumel. Oh, yeah. That would be really awesome. I'm so, so happy that you're able to go on trips like that and experience the world. And without Dive Heart, that might not have been possible. That's just really awesome. And of course, before we wrap this up, what advice can you give to fellow neuro neurodivergents like us when it comes to these topics we discussed? I would say follow your heart no matter what. I've, I've applied that. I didn't really learn that and put it in those exact words until much later, but I definitely have been doing it without the language to attach to it for a very long time. Us neurodiverse, our brains don't work the same as the neurotypical and society unfortunately doesn't accommodate us and the way our brains work. And we just need to, you know, do our best and everything we can apply ourselves to everything we want. And when it comes to mermaiding, when it comes to diving in general, any kind of water sport, when it comes to being a presence on the internet, so streaming on Twitch, uploading content like YouTube videos, Twitter posts, social media posts, or any of the things that we talked about today, just find what makes your dopamine produce crazy. Uh, for example, me, I have ADHD and ADHD is one of the things where our brains decides we don't want to make dopamine on our own. So we're constantly on the hunt for dopamine and it, it exhibits some pretty toxic and pretty unhealthy and annoying behaviors. I just kind of take that and apply myself to whatever and just do it as positively as I can. And I'm constantly on the hunt for dopamine. And this is what gives it to me. Being a mermaid, being a presence on the internet, having my community, having great friends, a really awesome support system. It's been great. So when you said later in your adult life. Yes, hi. So um, I wanted to provide a little bit of clarification. There were a few points along the interview where I mentioned gaining my freedom back or points in my life where I didn't have opportunities. I wanted to give a little bit of background about my past that prevented me from doing so, so that the viewers can understand what I mean by that and not feel any kind of alarm or confusion when I say I regain my freedom. Um, it's understandable. Thank you. And I didn't want to bring it up because, you know, after yes, all. I really, really appreciate you respecting my privacy and thank you for giving me the opportunity to come to you and offer to speak about this on your platform. So thank you so much to Lewis. And I never ask those kind of questions when I do my interviews ever to anyone. Very, very considerate of others. I apologize for my hair. It's annoying. That's all right. <laughs> Don't worry. Go ahead and say what you have to say. Thank you. So when I was a teenager, I was manipulated and abducted by a then partner and um, I was basically kidnapped and I was locked in this man's basement for over the course of six years and I was under heavy abuse and trafficking. As a result of such abuse, I became a mother at only 17 years old and I had two children and would have had more and um, if I hadn't taken a few steps to prevent further pregnancies, some very unhealthy steps that 
nobody should ever do. Yeah. And I just basically suffered a lot in that time. So I didn't really have a good or healthy or normal transition from teenagehood to adulthood. And I escaped from my abuser in 2017. Um, and I was about 23 years old with my life and my two children's lives intact, thankfully, because they absolutely were almost lost. So during the interview today with Louis Marinucci, I mentioned a few things when I got my freedom back or when I became free in 2017. This is what I'm talking about. And that small block of age from 17 to 23 is just non-existent in my life. And then a lot of things that I'm able to do now, like mermaiding and being a presence on the internet, I gain those opportunities and those entries into my journey in my later adult life after my freedom was regained in 2017. I am happy and free and just enjoying life and being super incredibly positive about everything. I do as much as I can to provide for my children and give them everything that they need and have fun at the same time while doing it. Hence this. So I just wanted to provide a little bit of clarification so that it wasn't too confusing throughout the interview with Louis Marinucci. Thank and you. Uh, thank you so much for providing me with a platform to help spread a little bit of awareness for domestic abuse as well. Yes. And I and thank tell you my for, story. And of course, if it wasn't for you being free, we would not renew this friendship that we have right now and even be doing what we're doing right now as we speak. Exactly. Lewis, unfortunately, was one of the many bystanders that got a little bit of shrapnel from that crazy abusive situation in my life. A lot of my friends had to be cut off. I had no access to any family members or friends. I had been completely sequestered away and um, a lot of friendships were lost and had not been regained. Um, a lot of a lot of bridges were burned. And thankfully, thanks to Pokemon Go, I was able to actually re-encounter Lewis in Center City, Philadelphia, we were out playing Pokemon Go and I was able to rekindle my friendship with him. And a, f a few other friendships were able to come back together over the years. The other ones are just, you know, gone to the wind and I cherish my memories and I make peace with it and I move on. And I'm glad we were able to rebuild that bridge that was damaged as a result of this. Me too. I appreciate you. Thank you. And same here with the ADHD and of course having great friends like you and of course it's been a long time and I didn't expect us to be having this interview in the future I didn't expect us to have this interview and it's kind of I'm kind of glad to have a friend like you in my life ever. thank you for saying that I really appreciate that it's been really, really awesome of a journey, and I'm glad that you're still here after all these years. Yes. You've been a major support, especially in the beginning of my Twitch career. You've always been there from the very beginning, and you've been a really huge support. And a lot of the uh, networking and the communities that I've been introduced to wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. So I have you to thank as well. Thank you. You're welcome. And same with you. I also have you to thank for g getting me into mermaiding and also further influencing my dive career. Awesome. Well, we support each other. And one of the things I say on my Twitch stream all the time, streamers support streamers, but we can apply that everywhere. Friends support friends. That's what we're here for. And of course, you also have a motto called loving, uh, love, <laughs> love and positivity. I mean, inclusivity, in, love and love positivity. And inclusivity. Yeah. And of course, everyone, Thank you for, for, for stopping by for this interview. And it was fun to have Kiai on the stream. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this latest interview as part of my Road to Cozumel series. It was great to hear from Kiai and what she had to say and her story about mermaiding, diving, and all the other things we talked about. In the meantime, this is Lewis saying, thanks for watching, everyone.